Okay, welcome. Welcome to part five. Cecily, you got caught off at the end there. I'm sorry, I didn't realize our recording was stopping. So could you pick up where you were, please? Uh, yeah, I was just saying that people didn't, I don't think people realized when it was sinking until the boat started slanting a bit into the water. But there was definitely frenzy. But I also think, I mean, people respond to trauma in different ways. I'm sure there were a lot of people who just froze, were paralyzed with fear. Maybe they couldn't move. They had no idea what to do. Um, and I have no idea how many of those people who were frozen physically, mentally, if they got saved because they weren't running to safety in the lifeboats. And so I wonder how many went down just because they didn't know what to do and were so panicked and who knows all the things rushing through their mind. Um, and then seeing that play out with all of these people physically rushing around them. I'm sure it was chaos. All right, wonderful. Thank you. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so I believe all three of you mentioned that it was probably fairly calm until the end, which the survivors would agree with you. Um, one of them said in a 1957 interview, everyone was helping each other on the Titanic, that it was, it was peaceful. No one, no one thought the ship was going to sink. Why would we have reason to panic? Um, she in particular did not want to board a ship. She, uh, but I said ship, I meant lifeboat. She said, I didn't, um, I didn't mean to go. I didn't mean to go. She kept saying that. Um, she thought she was safer on the ship than on a lifeboat. And she actually got in the very last one. And she was given a child to hold. And so she got in the lifeboat. But she kept seeing, she kept saying through the interview, I didn't think it was possible. Everyone was so cheerful. I didn't mean to go. Um, and that is the view that most survivors express, which is, uh, this was not something that they ever thought could happen. The Titanic sinking. They were so, they were so calm about it because they didn't think it could ever possibly happen. Um, I, again, with Eva Hart, however, she was only seven years old when the Titanic sank. <coughs> but she talks about her mother, who had a premonition that something bad was going to happen. So when she felt the bumps slightly before midnight, she just, her mother described it as a train coming into a station. That's what the bump hitting the iceberg felt like. So not much for most people. Most people describe something like that, which was not much at all. And so she sent her, her mother sent her father up to see what was going on. When her father came back, he didn't say anything. They just looked at each other and they started getting ready to evacuate. And she, when she asked her mother, her mother said, I didn't have to ask him, I knew. And so Eva Hart tells the story of getting into the lifeboat with her mother and being very thankful she did because for some people, their waiting was what was keeping them on the Titanic when it went down. And we do know that many, many people perished. And then later, so there was that calm where you simply walk up, you wait in line, you get on a lifeboat, and then later, uh, there was panic, as I think everyone has hit on. Um, Eva Hart says, gosh, there was panic. We could hear it. She says, even though she was only seven years old, she didn't take her eyes away for a second. Um, and of course, that's something that's going to stay with you for a very long time. And other survivors describe panic as well. And so yes, conduct on board was, I believe, as you have described, there was a calm before the panic. And of course, in the end, everyone was doing what they could to survive. And that brings us right into our takeaway which is what we see in common between the survivors 
And of course, some of it is luck. Surviving anything um, takes some luck. You have to be lucky enough to sometimes it's right place, right time. Sometimes it's simply being in the water at the right spot. Um, one of our survivors talks about how when a funnel collapsed, the funnel collapsed right in front of him. Um, and it could have easily crushed him, but it did not. And he was able to swim to a lifeboat. But the one thing we really see is that those who took things seriously, those who did as they were directed, got in lifeboats, um, were the people who ended up surviving and again, we have the tragedy of there was another ship, there were rockets, we don't know exactly why it was ignored, why the other ship never came. And so what I really want everyone to take away from this is uh, be vigilant, don't ignore, don't ignore gut feelings as Eva Hart's mom didn't, uh, don't ignore instructions from people who are trying to keep you safe and be proactive, be looking around. Don't let too few lifeboats get away. And as I was talking about in the beginning, to do this, I scoured many, many sources of varying repute. Um, you can see these here. I will link these um, all in the box below this video, I would like to thank Shelby, Cecily, and Grace for being my guest speakers on this podcast. And as I listen to this, I might catch myself saying something that is that is sort of dubious. Maybe it's only supported by a few sources. Maybe sources say something different. So I will be giving that description below as well. Thank you, everyone who has made it this far with us. Bye.